Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I'm excited to be here with you today uh, to look at the new concept statements uh, that have been issued from the FASB. This is going to be a multi-week uh, review as we are looking at how the FASB is updating their conceptual framework. Um, so we're going to start with Chapter 2, the reporting entity. So this is not something that is new. The FASB has been working on their conceptual framework for years. In fact, there was a discussion paper as far back as 2008, uh, and then they did an exposure draft in 2022. Um, and finally, we have updated um, the uh, reporting entity here, chapter two, um, to give an exact definition. So this project um, has been something that they worked on uh, for, again, quite some time, 2008, 2010, and then in January of 2014, they reactivated it. Um, what makes a conceptual framework very important is that it's the theory that underlies GAP, but is not GAP itself. It's what the board uses when making decisions. Uh, and so they write these sort of rules that they then apply when they're writing the ASUs. And currently, uh, they were looking for a definition of what is a reporting entity. And so they have decided uh, on a definition here. So a reporting entity is a circumscribed area of economic activities that can be re represented by general purpose financial reports that are useful to existing and potential investors, lenders, and other resource providers in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. And so again, this is something circumscribed, meaning that we can actually put our hands around it and understand uh, the uh, requirements um, for financial reporting purposes. And it has three features that it focuses on. Um, economic activities have been conducted. Those economic condition uh, activities can be distinguished from those of other entities. And the financial information in general purpose financial uh, reporting faithfully represents the economic activities conducted within the circumscribed area and is useful to the decisions about providing resources to the reporting entity. And so what we're really looking at is how do you put boundaries around economic activity, right? And so how do we know what can be its own set of financials. And so this uh, concept statement addresses things like consolidated financial statements, parent only, uh, portions of entities, or even my favorite, the combined financial statements. And so the goal of the FESB is to have a better definition here of a reporting entity uh, so that they can think about that when they are writing these ASUs, not just consolidated financial um, statements, but all of the various types of reporting that may be required. All right, so that's a wrap on this week's blog. Again, short and sweet and to the point. Next week, we will also be talking about the conceptual framework. Again, this is something the FESB has been working on uh, and they've updated or issued new chapters. And so we are gonna cover some of these changes so that you are aware of what the FESB is looking at as they are preparing these new ASUs. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you on a future blog. Thanks all, bye-bye.